You better not go live, boy! Let's see, how much... Is there a big delay? I tried to figure out the latency. Finally looked up the difference between normal latency and low latency. So hopefully, I'm pretty close to what the chat is and we don't have to wait 20 seconds for me to read what you have to say. But, welcome to... The Depression Chamber, the show where you submit your stories of dealing with anxiety, stress, depression, uh, any mental illness, or any cruel fate of life. And uh, we read them here together. And we, we've got some great, uh, let's see, music, uh, uh, copyright free music, that's what we'll say. Playing in the background. A shout out to, let's see, who was that? Uh, Johnny Deerfist, who did a super chat two hours before the stream started to say, oh boy, I'm out of the wood alone with my firearm and have to uh, look forward to this uh, good vacation, okay? How's everybody else doing in the chat? We've got Jim, Corey, Dave Yogurt, Alternate Ending, Supreme Leader, Admiral Alexander Kolchak, Big Boy, Evan, Ja Dway, Ja Crispy. Yeah, I do have a bit of a cum face, that is true. It is very blown out and white. Yo, Rambacked, Major D, Grape King, Hero 101, Rude Soup, Peace Triple Fan says, Yo, what up my N-words? Yes, you know where you are. Mr. Stone, Bloops, Waventino Gutierrez, Patchy, my brother, says, Post one in chat if depressed. We've got our One Piece mug here. With the straw hat logo on it. Yes, I'm sorry, uh, Juve, Juventino. <laughs> I don't speak Mexican, I don't know. Lots of ones in the chat. We got a couple of one, six, eights. I appreciate those. Uh, uh, Grape King is at a three, so I guess he's triple depressed. If I don't read Toot's story, I'm going to cry. Well, yeah, that's good thinking. I do have about 5,000 stories available to read. Uh, and as usual, I will let you guys vote on what you want to hear. So let's get a poll going. Let's start a poll. Which story first? Let's see. We've got one at the very top of my email called A Bunch of Girls Saw My Wiener in Public and Laughed. <laughs> so, girls laugh at wiener. Let's see. We've got, uh, I think this is Toot. It's called John K. Clips. I don't know anybody else who's obsessed with John K. So Toot's manifesto. Uh, semi-unsupportive family and an LGBTQ teen. Only semi-unsupportive? I don't, that's not that depressing. I've heard of some very unsupportive families in that regard. Oh wow, here's one called I tried to hang myself last night, okay. Hmm. Hang myself last night, and finally, my 1,000 pound fetish! Oh, fuck! I should have looked at these before! My 1,000 pound fetish. Hmm, okay, let's see what you guys want to hear first as I read this donation. Uh, let's see, what did that say? That said, uh, can't wait for the trans drug addict stories, guys that haven't gotten laid by 12. I'm such an incel. We do get a lot of stories like that for sure. And wow, my 1,000 pound fetish takes the lead, uh, followed by girls laugh at wiener. Uh, Toot is unfortunately in dead last with only 8% to be expected. Yeah, Toot bros, I don't feel so good. Hmm. Wow, 96 fucking votes! <laughs> Jesus! Wow, okay, 107 votes. Uh, it's very, very close! Three percentage points between the two. I don't know when to end this poll, but it looks like my 1,000 pound fetish is gonna take it. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, yeah, it's taking the lead by five now. So let's start off with my 1,000 pound fetish. It's not too long, don't worry. Hmm. Oh boy, just from the opening sentence. Okay, here we go. When I was 12, my parents watched the show on TLC called something like 1,000 Pound Sisters. 
I fondly remember watching, but I don't recall much from this time. But one thing I know for sure is that it caused me to develop an extreme fetish to morbidly obese fat people. In particular, morbidly obese fat women. So, potentially a bisexual character in this story. This fetish has caused me lots of harm in my life. I have tried again and again to pursue, spelled P-R-E-S-U-E, pursue this sexual desire, but failed. There as this fat girl in my middle school class named Charlotte. She was not morbidly obese like the fat women in the TLC show, but she was the closest thing I could find. I developed a crush on this girl. I would take photos of her at school with my iPhone, spelled I-F-O-N-E. This guy might still be in middle school. This might have happened last week. Uh, take photos of her at school with my iPhone and would jerk off to them after. I remember these masturbation sessions very fondly and wish I could experience them again. I won't go too D-Beth because I don't want you to get banned from YouTube again. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Every day during lunch period, I would stalk her and take note on everything about her. I learned small things like when she was on her period and that he friends called her Charlie. One day I couldn't stand just watching her from afar anymore and knew I had to act if I wanted to let if I wanted her to let me put my penis into her fat rolls and feed her entire sticks of butter. It was a cold winter morning and she was getting off the bus and walking into the school building. I look this opportunity to go up to her and ask her to be my date. When I called her name, she responded, she res she responded, I froze because I was too nervous to say anything. She waited a few seconds and said, what do you want? Okay, I hope this is fake. I replied with, I, 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 I masturbate to pictures of you. I had no idea why that was the first thing that came to my head, and I have myself greatly for this to this day. As soon as I said this, she screamed and ran to tell on me. There was nothing I could do about it. Expept. E-X-P-E-T-P. Expect. Wait for the uneatable to happen. Uneatable? Did you mean inevitable? After this, I was called to the Prince... <laughs> Prince it Bow's office and sent home early. My parents found out about it. This was the worst thing that could possibly happen because my father is an alt-right Christian and he would kill me if he found out about my fetish. When he found out about it, he did indeed beat the shit out of me and there was nothing I could do about it. Because of this, I am afraid to show my face in public ever again. I was suspended from middle school and had to start doing my school online. Currently, I have started my freshman year in high school and I have been struggling to socially interact with people at school. I'm afraid they would find out what I did in middle school. And that was my 1,000 pound fetish. Now, I, I will remind the good folks at home, we have no way to verify any of these stories. Very well could be somebody's fantasy, you know, just trying to write a funny story. But with that many spelling errors and mistakes, uh, I believe this is a real 14 year old. So, uh, let's see, Barrett Privateer said, Great to see you alive and making these, Jimbo. I'm hyped for the wiener and monkey box I've been harassing you about for months. Here's a burger on me. Thank you, Barrett. There is actually a new monkey box already uploaded to my channel, and uh, everybody on my Patreon has already seen it. So if you can't wait three or four more days, go check that out. But uh, I refuse to believe this. I'm sorry. That's fine. I, don't, I mean, big boy, we're not doing it to prove anything to you, I don't think. It might be real. I've, I mean, there's plenty of people... Who would love those big, big, beautiful women? Ooh. Uh, there's a story called Wanting to Have Sex with My Dad When I Was a Teen. Okay, let's do another poll. Okay. Next. Let's see, what did people want to hear about? A uh, wiener in... Wiener in public. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sex with dad, I guess. Uh, toot, your story, you got less than 10%. We're not doing you again. Um, hmm, what were the other ones? Tried to hang myself. And what's one more? 
Uh, there's one called Updates to Google Play Terms of Service. That might be a good one. And verify your email ad address for a website I've never heard of. That's good to know. Mm. Tales from the Underground Bodies Ring number one. This is the bodies guy? Could it be? I don't know about that. Uh, let's just do uh, stepmom from hell. Fuck it. Okay, let's see what people want to watch. I don't know if that's actually the bodies guy. I don't remember what his name was. And I'm already too hot for that fucking blazer. If she ain't 280, she ain't a lady. Sure, John Hancock, that's fine. I'm glad we're off to a good start with 1,000 pound fetish. Where my dad fuckers at? Did somebody say Blaze? Uh, sex with dad is winning at 41%. Now, I don't know the gender of the writer of that story, so it could go a lot of different ways. Hmm. Okay, looks like that one's winning. And this one's not too long either, so let's go with... Wanting to have sex with my dad when I was a teen. <laughs> with a, a name I would get canceled for if I read it. Uh, I am a MD cell, Middle Eastern incel, and I became very aware of my problems by the age of 16. Basically, the whole reason I took medication and went to therapy at that age was because I had anxiety because I thought I was sexually attracted to my dad. I'm pretty sure I'm involuntary gay, or at least bisexual, because the first time and the only time I ejaculated because of another person's touch was in the Muslim chapel of my high school when some cute twink touched my back. I also to this day sometimes jerk off to twink porn in Shota Hentai. Anyways, sometime after ninth grade, I always felt thirsty when my dad would come home from work. I don't know why. I believe I hated both my parents and had punched slash injured them both by that point. He had punched both of his parents? I guess it's the Middle East, who am I to judge? So it wasn't really lust specifically meant for my shit skin dad? Okay, that that's a weird, weird insult to throw out there. Uh, it was more like giving blowjobs to a ghost and my dad was just a trigger point because... It was a thought so horrendous to want to blow my dad, my brain would suffer paranoia and anxiety trying to shut that thought down. I have never told my therapists or anyone at all about this specific thought. I had neither online or IRL. So, Mumkey, if you're reading this, you and your audience are the first ones to know about this. All 200 of us. We all know this dark secret now. I also had suddenly figured out my sixth grade teacher was molesting me, so maybe that had something to contribute. Either way, my thirst problem is somehow fixed if I take meds. Later, I would realize it was the A's raping me, spelled A-Y-Y-S, and the SSRI is just there to shut my realization upon them. My current swirl of problems would come at about at ages 18 to 20. At some point, I was investigating the Kyle Odoms incident on a 4chan archive website. At that point, I was just blaming them for shit. I think he means Jewish people, uh, given the all the parentheses. Uh, and was a total wing, wing gnat, but after reading about Kyle Odoms, I realized there is more to it than just them. I don't know what Kyle Odoms is, so somebody maybe in the chat can let us know. So I went insane again and had to take my meds again. I now know there are reptilian entities constantly raping me and for it to not hurt, I have to take meds. I made mistakes after that point because of not taking my meds for too long. My blabbering problem came back and it manifested towards people it should not have manifested towards. I either completely shut down or blabber, which leads to people bullying me. Recently, I have decided to quit university because the teachers treat their students like sheep just like school. Kids are mean just like school, and I have no way of giving a shit about exams. 
Right now, my plans for life are to end my life at 22 of age, just like the dear Saint Elliot. And up until then, I'll just lead a hikikomori life full of misery and loneliness and lack of amusement. And that was wanting to have sex with my dad when I was a teen. Oh, really, Raphael, this is nasty. A great commentary. I don't think any of us could have arrived at that observation without your help. Yeah, no fucking shit. <laughs> and I thought we would lose viewers, but no, it's only gone up. <laughs> uh, Jim says, big ups Vincent Sexy Himsel too on Discord. I don't think my super chat went through. Love the stream. Big ups Brandon for giving me money. Well, there we go. Thank you to Brandon and Jim for that five pounds, I think it was. Uh, obvious copy pasta. True. Yeah, I've seen that one a few times. Uh, let's take a break from voting and just jump into Tales from the Underground Bodies Ring number one, Corn Nuts Backstory. Now, if you recall, you know, maybe a year or two ago, who can even remember at this point, we read a story about a guy who liked to go bodies which is, I think, uh, like a fight club in the school bathroom where they would just punch each other. Uh, I don't really remember the whole story, but this seems to be some sort of backstory. Uh, Since you loved my story about bodies so much, I'm writing more in-depth details about some of the people I met. I plan on writing more of these for attention, and I'm depressed, so it's not like I have anything better to do. It should be known that none of this is made up and it's all true. Well, now I'm suspicious, but let's go ahead. I first met Corn Nut when I was in 8th grade, but I hardly knew, but I honestly hardly knew him that well. I truly met him when we went bodies in 10th grade. Corn Nut was a tall white guy and we were in the same middle school band for a while, but he would barely ever show up for class. He was mostly friends with my fat friends Jacob and Miles and we met through those two. One time in band class, Corn Nut made a joke where a girl was touching him and he said as a joke, Oh, she's raping me, she's raping me. Our band teacher was a big fat white guy with a long white beard named Mr. Costner. Mr. Costner heard this and came in and demanded to know who said that. The class ratted out Corn Nut. He sent Corn Nut to the office to talk with a police officer because rape is serious, and as in quotes. After that, Mr. Costner was so upset he didn't even teach class that day. He just lectured us not to joke about those things and then forced us all to say one nice thing about every single person in the class. How did he get his name, Corn Nut? I'm not sure for sure, but I think it came through people picking on him. Corn Nut was always that one guy who would roast you and make fun of you as if it was a big joke. He was on the football team and stuff, and I think the guys on the team would pick on him and make fun of him. He started calling himself Corn Nut as a way of making it seem like the nickname didn't bother him. Now for the big part of the story. Corn Nut and another short chubby white kid were hanging out at one of their houses. I don't know if they were drunk or not, but somehow they started playing a game of chicken and were daring them to do things. Eventually, Corn Nut and another guy were dared to do the unthinkable. Now I swear to God himself, hand on the Bible, I'm not making this up. Technically, there's no way of knowing whether or not this is true because it's all just rumors that I've heard. However, Corn Nut himself admitted to doing the thing I'm about to tell you. And there was a big fat black guy named Aiden who was allegedly recorded this thing and the video is out there somewhere. And even the other guy involved admitted to doing this. And everyone at the school said this like it was a fact. Oh, there's a whole paragraph just to let us know this is a real story. But then again, everyone deserves the benefit of the doubt, and there's a chance that this is just a rumor or a joke. What was the thing Corn Nut was dared to do? Ha ha, my friend. Listen well. He was literally dared to have anal sex with another guy. He was dared to do that, and I guess that vibe apparently was, Oh yeah, I'm crazy. I don't care. I'd do that. I ain't a pussy. And he literally had gay anal sex with another guy. Obvious that means that Corn Nut is bisexual, but he to this day denies this and says he only did it as a dare and a joke. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. But you know what? I don't judge him for that. He's obviously bisexual and in denial of it, but I don't care, you know. He was a nice guy in my book. After we went bodies, his dad found out and Corn Nut made a big joke about it, saying that his dad whipped him for it. 
Sometimes he was rude and roasted me and made fun of me too much, but besides that I think he was really just misguided and a nice guy. DJ didn't like Corn Nut though, and the Samoan guy didn't like Corn Nut either because Corn Nut would make fun of them. Corn Nut and the Samoan guy went bodies and the Samoan absolutely demolished him. Corn Nut was literally laughing as he got beat up on the video I saw, and I thought that was funny, sad, and embarrassing. At one point, DJ and the Samoan guy even tried to jump Corn Nut to teach him a lesson because Corn Nut would make fun of everybody too much, but they never got around to that. The last time I saw Corn Nut was in 11th grade. I really loved that guy. And that was Tales from the Underground Bodies Ring number one, Corn Nut's backstory. So, you know, our writer here went bodies with a bisexual man. Nothing wrong with that. We've all been there. Let's see, what did I miss? Xander Brow says, What's up, King Reviewer? Hey, what's up, Xander Brow? PC Principal says, Hey, is my Toot account still banned? It should not be, Toot. Try to talk with normal Toot. You should be here. I really love that guy he says about N-word who has butt sex with men. Hey, nothing wrong with that. We've all surely loved a man who loved another man at some point. Should we even bother with Toots Manifesto? I am slightly curious, but I also know it will get me banned. Maybe we should just go to a bunch of girls, saw my wiener in public, and laughed. Oh, and he, he attached a Photoshop of uh, Vladimir Putin with very realistic female titties. Hmm. I'm gonna have to save that one for my fat folder, folks. That's right. Is Toot an actual woman? Now that's a philosophical question, and I'm willing to answer and say no. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> hey bro, I dare you to make passionate love with another man. Simi and Jimmy say less. Wait, why? You think I'm Corn Nut? Is that the plot twist? I was Corn Nut the whole time? Jim says big ups. Vincent Sexy Himsel 2 on Discord. Great suck. Okay. Toot says I can censor the naughty words. See, Toot, you're right there. You think I would ban you? No, I'm going to ban... Uh, who wants to be banned? Post the, the number four in the chat if you want my brother Patchy to, uh, to time you out right now. But we're going to read a bunch of girl... Oh, we got, we got a couple fours. <laughs> they don't care. Yeah, Patchy's excited now. A bunch of girls saw my wiener in public and laughed. This occurred years ago and it was one of the most embarrassing moments of my life. One fine summer day I sat on my towel at Huntington Beach, belly sticking out of my shirt like Homer Simpson. Hmm, I thought to myself, I think I fancy a swim. I always enjoyed swimming, I've pretty much been a fish-pilled and ocean-maxed swim cell my entire life. Some of my earliest memories are of myself floating in the pool as a toddler next to some fat chick with big tits. The thing about Huntington Beach is, it's not really a beach for relaxing swims or comfortable family raft sessions. It's a surfing beach with massive roiling waves that toss you every which way. Having grown up in Florida and having loved swimming during hurricanes in my early teen years, this was my ideal kind of beach. Unfortunately for me, instead of being the lithe, I might not know how to pronounce that word, L-I-T-H-E, lithe. I'm a real English major, folks. A young swimmer of old, I was now a big-tummied 300-pound fat fuck with a neck beard and shitty hygiene. I had a good time in spite of my decreased level of fitness, diving into waves, body surfing them to shore, which was helped by my newfound fat fuck buoyancy, and just splishing and splashing like a total girl boss. Then, as I was sitting or standing near the shoreline, one fateful wave came crashing down on me. It skillfully tore the trunks from my waist, exposing my pee-pee to the world. As this happened, a group of women about my age were coincidentally walking past. They all saw my exposed, hairy, flaccid cock, which had been shriveled by the chilly Pacific salt water. It also didn't help that I had a generous pubic pad. 
They all saw my shriveled hairy cock and laughed, and it was the worst fucking thing in the world. I wanted to fucking kill myself. Perhaps if I had a small penis humiliation fetish, I would feel differently about the experience, but I'm just not that lucky. Anyway, it's all okay now. I'm ripped and hot, and now my pubic fat is gone. My penis is slightly above average. Just goes to show that things can turn around as long as you're tall, hot, not fat, your penis isn't small, and you remember to shower. The end. Wow. Another beautiful story. What the fuck is a pubic pad? I'll tell you when you're older, illusion of glory. Jerry, they all saw my penis, Jerry! This has a good lesson? Yeah, just be a Chad and you'll be okay. Okay, I'm gonna do another vote for the next one. Uh, somebody literally just submitted one right now called I Need Saul in My Life. Vote Fabulous Felines Story. Hell yeah, baby. Swim cells rise up. Happy early birthday. Thank you, Mako. And actually, my birthday is coming up this Thursday, and we're going to do a live episode of Simi and Jimmy's Treehouse. Uh, me and Eggy are both going to be here doing that, so stay tuned for that one Thursday morning. And then we're going to a Dream Theater concert uh, that evening, so it should be a good birthday. Let's see, let's do a poll. Next. Uh, we could do... Uh, Fabulous Feline's Humble Beginnings, sure. Fabulous Humble. I don't know why anybody would vote for that, but he, he donated, I think, so. Uh, Toots Manifesto, why not? Oh yeah, tried to hang myself last night. We'll give him one more shot at that one. And what's the last good one to completely win the poll? Bullying, racism, and growing up in the hood. Okay. Wow, Toots Manifesto takes the early lead. At 40%. It's a damn Google Doc. This is only one paragraph, you fucking lazy. She's literally on the document right now! I see her cursor! Get the fuck out of here! Stupid. Uh oh, I'm lagging. Okay, maybe uh, the latency was a bad idea. Is it working now? Yeah, a lot of people are leaving. That sucks. Maybe I have to start over with uh, low latency. Maybe the ultra low is not working. You can submit your stories to thedepressionchamber at gmail.com. Uh, looks like we're currently tied with Toots Manifesto and uh, tried to hang myself. Yeah, sorry if the stream's lagging. Uh, I'm trying ultra low latency for the first time, and maybe that's why. It is what it is, YouTube. And it looks like with 143 votes, Toots Manifesto wins by one percentage point. Okay, so let's take a look. At Toots Manifesto. I was inspired to write this by a certain Toon community F slur by the name of L.S. Mark. Recently he whined about Spongebob actually being a- Uh oh, it's, it's fucking up again. I see it on my own screen now. Recently he whined about Spongebob actually being a real cartoon now, while all, all while defending bean mouth bullshit with his life like a typical Toon community hack. It got me thinking how much I can't stand the Toon community and how they aren't real fans of animation, just a bunch of emotionally stunted losers who never grew up to watch baby crap like Bluey. Uh, 
then uh, they try and claim animation is cinema but use crap like the Mario movie and other kids movies to make that point because most of them have never seen real animation for adult like Ralph Bakshi's films such as Fritz the Cat, Heavy Traffic, or Coonskin. Just fake hack LA writer shit like Bojack Reddit Man. I have to wonder where everything went wrong for American animation. The Japs have managed to actually live up to the idea that animation is for everyone. Making real animation and not just for adults, but every demographic imaginable. While we are in a second dark age where everything is shit. To be continued. Yeah, I wish that would have stayed at 8% vote. Uh, I don't know if I want to read part two to apply yourself. Copy pasta, yeah. Balling right now, so heavy. Okay. Hopefully the stream is good now. Uh, I, I don't know what to do to fix that, but... Uh, let's finally go to I tried to hang myself last night. He only lost by one percentage point. Oops. <laughs> At the, is this actually Mumkey on the off chance? You see this don't post that. I got some distance from the whole event and figured I don't want my personal shit out there. Well, should we respect him? <laughs> I mean, it's an anonymous story. Nobody knows who you are, dude. You know, the only way you're going to get out it is if you admit it was you. What does Toot's voice sound like? As bad as you can imagine. You ever seen fucking Drawn Together? She's imitating the cartoon character. Let's do a poll. Should we ignore this man's wishes? <laughs> okay. Read it anyway. Yes or no? He says, uh, you know, don't read this when I change my mind, but once you're in the chamber, what do you want me to do? It's a beautiful looking story. Yeah, no mercy. 77% say yes. I mean, I'm sorry. What do you want me to do? The people voted for it. They voted for it again. Okay. This is an anonymous story, so... Uh, this is, I tried to hang myself last night. I tried to hang myself last night, and this time was the closest I've ever been to death. I was laying in my bed in the middle of the night, tired but unable to sleep. It was one of those nights where your brain sacrifices sleep for overthinking. I've struggled with depression for the vast majority of my life. I've even attempted suicide before. Once when I was 14, and again when I was 18. After the second attempt, I made a vow to myself that I wouldn't do it again. The look in my mom's eyes when she found out what I tried to do will haunt me forever. For these past few years, I've been pretty good at fighting overthinking. Yeah, I still have my lows here and there, and yeah, the thoughts of ending it are still there. But normally I'm able to talk myself down if it gets really bad by saying, everything you're worrying about is in all in your head. Or, this is only temporary, it'll get better soon. Because the lows I have usually last about a week at most, and then fade away until whatever my next low is. Last night was different, however, because it wasn't just a low. I was lying there, thinking about my life. The first thing that crossed my mind was how I was ruthlessly bullied both at home and at school, and now by my chat, I assume. We all <laughs> voted to read his story. Uh, my stepdad was and still is an alcoholic who projects his insecurities upon me. Even as a kid, he called me a failure, a lowlife, a joke, a retard, a faggot, and a dirty Mexican. He used to hit me and throw things at me. When I was 11, he threw a full beer can at my leg because I was slightly annoying him, leaving a fat welt on my thigh for weeks. Once he came home drunk while I was in the living room playing video games and came out of nowhere with a timer saying, when this timer goes off, I'm shutting off the Wi-Fi. And when I asked why, all he said was, because fuck you. I was 15 at the time. My mom, more often than not, just let it happen. But anytime she would call him out on something, he would always play victim. If something went down and my mom wasn't there, he would say it as if he did nothing wrong. And I was the enemy even when I was a child. 
often excusing his actions with, he got up in my face. Now I'm almost 21, and I still live here. Their house is a cesspit of dirty dishes, black mold, and the memories of a broken home that are impossible to shake off. The worst part is I have nowhere else to go. I'm forced to live in the same place that holds memories of a younger me being belittled by this grown man. Then I started thinking about my time in school. I used to wear glasses and was overweight, so I was an easy target for kids who thought they were hot shit. The teachers didn't make it any better either. As a matter of fact, they thought I would become the next school shooter all because I was edgy, to the point where they would grasp at straws just to find ways to get me in trouble. For example, in seventh grade I was drawing a shitty action comic where some of the characters had guns. However, I fucked up on the first page and threw the whole thing in the trash. A few hours later I found myself in the office getting suspended for said comic. They literally dug through the trash to look for a reason to get me in trouble. After that, more recent events crossed my mind. I found out that one of my best friends betrayed me. I introduced my sister to my friend group because she didn't really have friends of her own, so I wanted to be nice. I talked to all of my friends individually saying, if you hang out with her, don't date her or fuck her. I don't want to be in a position where I have to choose sides. And the fuck boyfriend in particular, Larry, gave me his word that he wouldn't do anything with her. <laughs> Fast forward a couple years, I find out he fucked her not once, not twice, but four times. And I keep in literally counting how many times his sister gets fucked. I can see why he didn't want me to read this. He lied to me for years. He betrayed my trust for years. I cut him out of my life, but I want to see him bleed. <laughs> well, Larry, look out! Run! <laughs> Run, Larry! Joe Gatto's looking for you. And then my mind was set on one thing. People only love you when you're dead. I grabbed my belt and headed to the bathroom, wrapped it around the shower curtain pole, and my neck and took that step off the side of the bathtub. People say that suicide survivors regret their action after that make that jump. Take that step, swallow those pills, or shoot that gun. What disturbs me is I didn't regret it. I looked at my face in the mirror and I slowly watched my brown skin turn dark purple and my vision was starting to dim. Then I thought of one person, my girlfriend. I couldn't do this to her even though I wanted everything to just end. She gets sad whenever I joke about dying. Imagine how she'd feel when she finds out her boyfriend killed himself. With what little energy I had left, I managed to place my feet back on the side of the tub and took the belt down and crawled back into my bed, still shaken by the fact that I felt nothing for my own safety and only stopped out of fear of hurting the only person who's shown me genuine love in a long time. And that was, I tried to hang myself last night. Eh, you know, not, not bad enough to regret the submission. I think, uh, you know, if that guy is watching this, uh, you're fine. You're fine that we read that. If he has a girlfriend, he has nothing to complain about. Normie's story. <laughs> he was Larry all along? That's fucked up. I hope not. Entered at a midpoint despite being late again. Hey, welcome, Demented Duskull. Can't be depressed, he has a GF. Alright, these are all on page one. Should I go through the back catalog, find some stuff from, like, years ago? Let's see. Uh, here's one called I Farted. It says, I farted today, everyone laughed. That's the whole story. Okay, that's one more in the book. I love these ones that say, don't read the other email I sent. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wait, that was from you, Demented Duskull. <laughs> don't read it, it's embarrassing. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's gotta be from you. It says Astral Aegis Slash. I'm pretty sure that's Demented Duskull. Was it him complaining because he, he thought he was shadow banned on YouTube? Uh, there, here's one called I Have AIDS, and then the body just says penis. And I'm really glad we're going through the 2021 submissions right now. 
read it. I don't know where it is. It just, it's just an email that says, don't read the other email. And then there is no other email. People asking me to let Kino Corner read a story. I'm pretty sure they regretted that when that happened. Uh, girl, jail, same girl. Hmm. Oh, this one's long as fuck. I don't know about that. What the hell? This is like 10,000 pages long. What the hell's going on? Wait, you see submitting photos of these people? In a store? This is weird. This guy wrote like a 10,000 paragraph story and he's like submitting photos of his high school friends for context. What the fuck? Wait, that was you! <laughs> what? It's literally you! <laughs> if you read mine, don't show the photos. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking you! I'm not reading this shit! <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why would you send me fucking photos of your fat? Uh, whatever. You people are weird. Uh, okay, let's do a vote. How I ruined my girlfriend's life and drove her to suicide. I need to learn some some tips and tricks. I'll put that one on the poll. It was 2021. I am a changed man. Sure. Okay. Uh, ruined girl GF life and suicide. Gay retard rambles about how shit his life has been. Okay, gay ramble. Uh, my life. My seriously fucked up life. Seriously fucked up life. And sex cult and shit cookies. This is an update from my former obsessive cringy ass story. Hey, it looks like that's from a chick, but that, you know, that probably means it's a transgender story. Uh, sex, cult, and shit cookies. Okay, vote on those. Or why did Randy say yikes? What happened? You know it's bad if, if Randy is fearful, because I've said some fucked up shit in front of Randy. How many volumes of One Piece are on your shelf? I have every single one currently released so 103 uh, ruined GF's life and suicide is winning with 46% of the vote okay yeah, it's not too long let's do it thoughts on Biggs's death uh, it hasn't happened yet, has it? I'm pretty sure I would have heard about that. Anyway. How I ruined my girlfriend's life and drove her to suicide. I want to start this by saying these names are changed and I'm 15 years old. In November of 2019, I heard about this girl Haley through my friend at the time, Daniel. He mentioned her by telling me how he had a crush on her. I didn't know her, so he showed me a pic and I thought... She was pretty fine as well, but I already had a girl and I'm not the type to cheat as I've been cheated on before. I obviously forgot about her pretty shortly after me and David are done talking and think nothing of it. Until a month later, me and Haley met. The second semester of school started, meaning we got new elective classes, and me and her shared an art class and were seated pretty close to each other. Me and her friends started talking and we connected. As I previously mentioned, I was already dating someone but began to catch feelings. I mean, how wouldn't I? She listened to Lil Peep, had a fat ass, was a fellow stoner, and we already had a lot of mutual friends. I asked her if she was single and she told me she wasn't, and she was dating someone online. I broke up with my girlfriend knowing that online shit didn't last, and I would be able to pull her because it was pretty obvious she had feelings for me. We were great together, but she would always complain about her Discord boyfriend Zeke, which kind of bothered me. 
I'm not the kind of guy who gets annoyed when people talk about their relationships. It just bothered me that all she ever did was complain. Like, damn, if he's so bad, leave him. And she eventually had to, when shit stayed, to go downhill for her. So she sent nudes to Zeke, which is pretty normal. Everyone does it, but what usually doesn't happen is getting caught. Her mom walked into her room at night and caught her sending nudes, and to this day her mom claims that she had a divine intervention, as she only checked her room because she felt like something was wrong. Back to the story, the next day me and Haley are at school early talking, and she's telling me about how her phone got taken. All of her social media was deleted and she may get sent to a boarding school. And she wasn't allowed to leave the house. At this point, I pretty much became her shoulder to cry in, which made us really close. I had pretty strong feelings towards her and eventually I felt the time was right to ask her out. I was pretty confident in myself as she always showed a little interest, sitting on my lap, playing with my hair, etc. She told me she needed some time to think. And on the next day, agreed. After this, we became addicted to each other, as in, uh, as each other as I was all she really had and I was really into her. The way our school works is that lunchtime is an hour long and you can hang out pretty much anywhere in the school. So me and her would hide out in the storage closet of the art room and make out the whole time. Pretty standard dating stuff. But that's until her dad got into MDMA and began beating her and sexually assaulting her. It was really rough, but her confiding in me made us really attached. The next natural step was for me to buy some condoms. So I did, but we couldn't fuck in school and she wasn't allowed out of the house. So we got the genius idea for me to sneak in at 3 a.m. and for us to hook up. We did just that, but then her dad heard us and walked in. He threw a bottle of Jack Daniels at me and screamed for me to get the fuck out. As I was running out from the back door, I heard screaming. It was terrible and I couldn't check on her to make sure she was fine as she didn't have a phone. I was absolutely terrified and cut myself through the night. Even worse was this was a Friday so I wasn't able to see her until Monday. By the way, at the time it's March 2020, I forgot to mention, uh oh, uh oh. When I did see her, she had a whole plan for us to run away from small town Florida to Anaheim, California to live in foster care, as it's the only way we would be able to stay together as she was going to get sent to a boarding school. You're gonna call me a simp, but I was seriously considering it. I mean, she had pussy better than my ex, I'd say that much. We began planning everything. She stole money from her mom's friend who was visiting and had enough for two bus tickets. At this point, I hadn't decided on going and I was pretty set on it, but I would always consider everything I had to lose if I did leave. My family, all my friends, my phone, you can't bring any tech with you if you don't want to get tracked. And then I began to think about what would happen if I got caught again. I've ran away before for nine days and when I returned home, life was pure hell for months. And when I did, I saw some shit. I stayed with a homeless man named Lee and left my town. I saw four dead bodies and had to run from cops multiple times since I'm not white. Considering all of this, I decided not to run away, but I was going to find it hard to break the news. In the art storage room during our usual makeout session, she started giving me a blowjob and the art teacher walked in. He was furious and we were both sent to the office with our parents about to be called. At this time in the waiting room, me and her had a final five minutes together before I knew she was going to get sent away for good. I knew I was fine since one time I took my mom's phone and blocked the school number, <laughs> but she was fucked. That's good thinking. For some reason, I dropped the whole let her down gently idea and decided to break up with her and tell her that I wasn't going to California with her. She was absolutely fucking devastated and understandably at that. She told me she was done with this world and I began to fucking panic. When I got home, I killed a whole pack of jewel pods in one night. Yeah, I was fucking worried. I cried my eyes out. I wasn't even sure whether or not she would follow through and kill herself, but I was terrified regardless. It comes to May of this year and I get a call from her mother. She committed suicide. I've been a self-harming wreck ever since and nothing is filling the void. Not producing, friendship, other relationships, 
and I find myself having a lot of meaningless sex with people I don't care about. Most of my interests aren't doing anything for me anymore because I killed my lover. I'm not suicidal, but I'm at a point in life where I feel like I'm not living anymore. I'm just going through the motions. If you read this, thank you, and if Biggs is there, please give his titties a shake for a grieving teen. Well, I believe the chat is currently grieving the death of Biggs, so, you know, we've all got something to be sad about today. But that was... that story. This might be the roughest one so far. Heartsy says, boo-hoo, I have tons of sex, woe is me. Spelled woe as wrong as you could possibly spell it in this context, but that's fine. Zoomer, Romeo, and Juliet. Is Biggs dead? Uh, some people say that, uh, you know, a man truly dies after getting married, so... You know, my brother and Biggs are spiritually dead, perhaps. Woe is me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, you guys know me. I have a small bladder. We're going to take a brief intermission so I can pee. So enjoy the sad music. Hey, mon, I just want to say, mon, if you learn to smile once in a while, then maybe your face wouldn't look so vile. One Piece sucks! Uh, ban everybody in the chat. Every single person, I don't care. You're all gone. Hey, I was, I did wash my hands, Patchy. It doesn't take me three minutes to fucking piss. Yeah, Randy, please ban everybody. They're talking shit about One Piece. <laughs> get up, get him out of here. Uh, depressed soy boy with anger issues. Let's do another vote. Okay. Next. Soy boy anger issues. Um. Oh yeah, sex cult and shit cookies. That's one. Your order from Lee's restaurant is being prepared. That sounds like a sad one. Let's see. Uh, gay. Oops. Gay ramble. And yeah, what's one more? Hmm. 
Mm, here's one called a weird one. Why not? Okay. Can't believe people did not leave during two minutes of intermission. You guys are really dedicated to the depression chamber. And it's basically a four-way race right now. Everything's at about 25%. People want to hear all of these stories. It, it's jumping back and forth between sex cult and shit cookies and uh, the soy boy with anger issues. But at 116 votes, sex cult is at 34%. Might be calling it. 33% now though. It's very close. Ah, uh, it's tied. Soy Boy is winning again. <laughs> and that Soy Boy is taking it. Okay. We're, I'm calling it Soy Boy with anger issues. Now I just have to find it again. There we go. Okay. Sup, Mumkey. It's the biggest soy boy cuck you don't know. Sorry if this is written or formatted badly. I don't email people often because I'm a fucking Zoomer. I'm a 16-year-old guy who can't control his anger. I've had anger issues since I was a little kid. I threw Wii remotes across the room all the time. That's why they had the strap on there. So that, you know, it'd hang on. And was diagnosed with clinical depression when I was 13. I've always been a hardcore Democrat, advocating for police defunding and socialism. I also have a history of not being able to be friends with Republicans because of how historically bigoted they are. Uh, it sounds like you might be bigoted, dude. Fuck. <laughs> you know, judging people based on their fucking politics like that. Uh, and the total inability of Republican presidents to run the USA. Yeah, Biden's doing a great job right now, ain't he? Uh, despite my disliking for those of the Republican Party, I never had a full-on rage-fueled screaming episodes over them. That is, not until 2020. In the last months of 2019, I was so excited. I thought 2020 was going to be my year. Being the year I turned 16, I was expecting to get my driver's license and get a part-time job at Target. I also had my eye on a short, red-headed cutie pie in my counseling group who I was planning to ask out, but that's a story for another day. As soon as 2020 started and all the news of COVID-19 started breaking, my goals became unreachable and my dreams were crushed. This was the year I was going to go from depressed loser who contributes nothing to society to minimum wage working Chad with a cutie pie GF, but my plans were taken out of my grasp and stomped into the ground. Seeing President Trump's awful attempt at solving this crisis led me to believe that Trump and anyone who supports him are bigoted neo-Nazis who ruined my chances at escaping my depressing life and making a change for the better. So much so that whenever I see someone express a, express a political opinion that doesn't align with my far left ideals, I feel pure rage taking over my body and start immediately shit talking and causing a scene. These anger-fueled outbursts have gotten me into trouble in several discords <laughs> and made my parents consider disowning me. I know the chat is probably laughing at my soy rage right now and that's fine, I kinda deserve it. If you or the chat have any advice on how I can control my soy levels and become a regular human being again, I appreciate it. I love your content, Mumkey, and I hope you don't die of cringe from this email. Yours truly, Florian Himsel. What the fuck? No, it's not from Florian. Does anyone who follow politics actually have this much self-awareness? Uh, he might. I wonder if this guy would cure a thousand blind people if given the chance. Almost certainly not. This guy loves supporting Ukraine right now, and he would sacrifice anything to give them one extra tank. E-Rich Origins. That's what they get for policing jokes. Well, hopefully he got his part-time job at, at Target by now. It's been a couple years. Read the cult story, good thinking. Let's go to that one. Okay. 
This is Sex Cult and Shit Cookies, written by somebody with a female name. It's always nice to know which ones are male incels and which ones are femcels. Uh, this is an update from my former obsessive cringy ass story. Hell, I was kind of surprised to see that my submission was read. Uh, maybe we'll get some hints as to which one, because I do not remember. I laughed my ass off hearing it be read out loud after having written that almost a year ago. Anyways, I binge watched the archived Depression Chamber streams and realized one of the stories kind of sounded familiar to the sob story my current girlfriend had. I confirmed it with her, which inspired me to write this and to also talk about how one of my exes became a total stalker for me and how I beat his ass. I apologize if this isn't depressing enough for the stream, but I thought it would be amusing to submit. Please change that dumbass piano music to the Benny Hill theme or something if you want a better mood for how this story is going to go. And now this is only five more paragraphs, so if it's a shitty story, don't worry, we'll get through it real quick. So to start from the beginning, being the cis girl that I am, I got really into paganism and started my own little sex cult with the community that worships the god Dionysus. Uh, through that, I met my current girlfriend and dumped the guy I was with since it was an online relationship and I wanted that real life shit baby. We've been vibing for a while now and it's been really dope. I don't feel reliant on her uh, for all of my own happiness and she doesn't rely on me for all of hers either. But being the former stalker that I am, a few months ago I kind of realized something was up. The car kept on being parked outside of my house and I recognized that it was my ex's mom's car. That fucking blue minivan from the mid 2000s. What was he doing in there? I don't know, maybe jerking off to my sister's silhouette thinking that it was me. This was the ex that I used to break up with my first girlfriend by cheating on her with him then dumping him when I was done and boogie woogied down to suicide town. He was the type of fucker that wanted his balls chopped off and fed to him. If I told him to steal something from his work, he'd steal it for me. A total white bread simp. I'm surprised he hasn't written his own depression chamber submission about me. Anyway, he kept on texting me to get uh, texting to get me and the rest of the gang of friends back together to play D&D for old times sake. Feeling sorry for the fella, I attended one session and brought along some food to share. But the thing that convinced me to never see him again was when he asked for one of the cookies I brought. I handed it to him, and he leaned down in an attempt to be seductive and bite the cookie while it was still in my hand. The nerve of this pasty, slender-ass ginger kid convinced me that after that session was over, I was never going to let him pull anything again. So the next time I saw that car parked on the end of the street, I came up with a plan. Now, you can't just get a bat and threaten them to skadoodle. No, that just turns this type of stalker on. So I baked him cookies, pretended to be surprised to see him stopping by my house to text, and offered him some as I wanted to give the rest of the batch to the neighbors. Little did he know that these ticking time bombs were loaded with chunky milk from the back of the fridge. The poor fool would have been shitting liquid out of his ass for a solid day. Boy, am I lucky he wasn't into scat. Loop that for two or three more times and what do you know? The guy stops texting near my house. The coup de grace, however, is to send tubes of Pringles in his mailbox to distract part of his psyche and increase his own paranoia and confusion. End it with sending a shiny purple dildo and you're good to go. I asked my girlfriend if she was okay with me sharing which lucky guy from this sausage fest she was with. Unfortunately, however, she told me that she didn't want to rile up former flames. We still had a good laugh about it when we were fucking in the woods. Anyways, peace, bro. Hope you're doing Gucci. So this depression chamber story was I poisoned a guy <laughs> and I put Pringles in his mailbox. That's that's a woman's version of depression, folks. We're seeing it right here. Uh, let's see, Mako said, I sent in a story a while ago and legit don't remember what it is. Gonna be working during the birthday stream most likely, but big ups for Aggie. Okay. Toot says, as much as I hate troons, real women probably deserve them when they act like this. Let them fight. 
You know, Toot can say it, okay? I was quoting Toot. Hmm. Uh, here's a short one. Uh, Hi, Mumkey. Watching your stream, I spilled my cherry pop tart goo on my comforter. Okay, that's legitimately more tragic than the one we just read. Let's go back even further in time. Are there stories from like 2018? There's a wow, a lot from 2019 for sure. Okay. I'm at the very farthest depths of my inbox and there's just tons of pages of unread stories. Should I go to the very first one? Okay, let's take a look. This is submitted November 3rd, 2019. This person might as well be dead. Who knows? Maybe they're watching right now. Who could say? Hey, Jimmy. Yeah, we're getting personal. First name basis, baby, because it's about to get dark, gritty, and evil, I guess. Anyway, I got my story here. I got intrigued since you said it's about venting, and recently I've been going through my problems a bit, so it's topical and current. Let me set the characters, all real names censored. Me, Hannah, Gwen, Adriana. This story has a lot to do with me and three females, so yeah, everyone else will, will remain nameless. The good shit starts on paragraph four. Good to know. So my entire life, I have been apathetic and internally emotionless. I have felt anger and sadness is great, amplified volumes. I have barely felt happiness at all. I was born a bastard to an unhappy, unmarried couple. When I was two, we had to move across the country, the United States, to a shitty house in nowhere, Michigan. It wasn't Detroit or any major city. It also wasn't rural or country. It was just a tiny and nowhere suburban town. My parents split up when I was seven. My father wasn't absent or negligent, but never talked to me. My mother forced herself into my life. Blah, blah, blah. My family is composed of angry, awful, drug, and alcohol-addicted people. Ooh, uh, I was... Yep, and I can confirm this is the same name. I was the soy boy from that story. I was in a deep depression three years ago when I sent that. I got my life on track for the most part. Got a job, a good hobby, and lost 60 pounds. Hey, there you go. I'm glad that you now uh, praise God Emperor Trump, which is also written in the chat. As far as anybody listening knows. Uh, okay. I obviously became a vacuum of emotion, always needing more because so much of the time I have none. And so love was obviously a huge element of my life. Almost four years ago, I met a girl, Hannah. Hannah was a dream. She was 1,000 times smarter than me, knew everything, mildly autistic, very cute, solid 10. Turns out she was also Satan, but not like the Hail Satan kind. More of the Satan eats your soul and rips you limb from limb kind. She would keep me constant limbo for the entire time I knew her. Two years. Always breaking up and getting back together, demanding I put my time and energy into her. It was taxing. Awful. But one day, her and her friends went on a crusade. A glorious, mighty crusade. A crusade to end me, expose and cancel me, blah, blah, blah. She threw me away, put me on display, and trashed me. I was broken. Here's where the juicy shit that has been recent starts. After a long time being a sad loser faggot who cried and nothing else, my mental and emotional state degraded more and more. Alone and unbothered, I had three outlets. Music, which led to the creation of my band. Self-harm, which led to several cuts down my hand. Walks, which made me realize how much I love to live in the cold. But being a sad loser gets boring. Why not be a sad sort of not loser-ish? So I got into drugs and more music. For three months, I was basically addicted to THC. It made me pass out in a 7-Eleven parking lot, scream at some random bachelorette party, lay down in a stranger's parking lot, and I wrote an entire movie in 10 minutes. And all with my friend, Nameless, who supplied endless amounts to me because he was rich, ran a shop, and treated me like a brother. Along with this, I also began to cut myself. I was alone and live in a shitty apartment that I hate. So when it's dark and my tiny room is quite, 
I would sit by the candlelight and feel the tense, sharp burn of a knife run down the palm of my hand. I despised life. Everything was meaningless. I was a doomer. Sad music, self-harm, drugs. I want it all, god damn it. Then I thought, this is stupid. I thought, my life is so worthless and so lacking. Why am I making it worse? So, I quit. Easy as that. No more self-harm I haven't cut in a long time. No more drugs I've been sober a long time. Hell, no more jerking off either. If only it were so easy. I feel everything. I'll pat myself on the back. Those are some major positives. But when I say everything, I mean everything. So there are still so, so many negatives. For one, I'm still lonely. My therapist is an unenthusiastic prick who I don't even see anymore because he wanted more money. My parents don't really care about me. I don't see my friends that much anymore and I'm still single. One day I decide, fuck it, I'll go to a football game. Me and my boy and his bitch cheating girlfriend. And wouldn't you know it, one of my old close friends is there. And with him, his friend I don't know. And with that guy, another guy. And with that guy, a girl. A quite confused, beautiful girl. We'll call her Gwen. Now at this time, I was becoming a piece of shit. Sure, I quit drugs and porn, but I was still angry and hateful. Uh, football, uh, like the American kind, not, not football. Uh... Sure, I quit drugs and porn, but I was still angry and hateful. I started being louder, making people pissed off, breaking and vandalizing shit. So I was already loud. Now imagine that, coupled with me being extra nervous that this awesome girl is here. By the end of the night, me screaming about Satanism and anarchy made me sure I drove her away, but I didn't. I got those digits, baby. After some time, we started dating, and we still are. She doesn't talk to me a lot. We have very little common interests. Her friends are all guys who want to kill me. She never wants to do anything. She doesn't like me talking to other girls, but she still is still friends with her ex-boyfriend who has attacked me before with metal rods and follows me around wherever he sees me at events or in town. Creepy fucking guy. And to make things worse, I'm in love with someone else. We'll call her Adriana. Adriana is like Gwen if Gwen was enthusiastic, outgoing, loving, caring, musical, and bottom line better. But Adriana is with another guy. Let me guess, Christopher? I want to choke the life out of that motherfucker. This guy is unironically an awful person. You see, Adriana went through trauma as a kid. She also comes from a broken family. And I think the reason she is so nice is because she is so broken. But this guy will get on top of her and it makes her uncomfortable. He never follows through, always makes promises and never shows up. He is also unenthusiastic and can't handle any emotional pressure. So me and Adriana are both with unenthusiastic people, yearning for more, want the same exact things, uh, come from weird places. But she is attached to this guy for some reason. And when she tells me how awful he is, she also says he's perfect. Meanwhile, if I tell her the bad things of Gwen, she says I should leave her. Doesn't add up. So I am in love with Adriana and it breaks me. All I have emotionally right now is Gwen, even though she sucks. <laughs> so I'm taken and Adriana is taken, but I would do anything to be with her. One day I get so fucking broken, I write my suicide letter. I get just enough pills to kill me. I cry, I scream, I punch walls, I rip and tear things. I put them all in my mouth and I go to spit them out into my toilet. I am a failed artist, an emotionless loser. I can't have the girl I want. I can't have the house I want. I live in a shitty apartment. My whole life has been an emotional, uh, emotional absence and abuse. I was ready to die, but couldn't. Later that day, I tell Adriana how I feel just to get at least one thing off my chest. With no surprise, she is still to this day with that guy. And because of my feelings towards her, we don't talk as much anymore. I'm still with my girlfriend who I think hates me. I still live in the same apartment. I still have not got my music going. As I said to myself a long time ago, my life is not a movie. This story has no positive ending. Nothing. 
It's just all this sadness leading up to me almost killing myself, then not, only to be followed by returning to the same sadness. I guess that's why I like your videos and other comedy so much. I promise I won't kill myself, but I think it's a little funny. This was supposed to be a story of my experience with depression, but really it's a recap. My story isn't over, and as painful as it may be, maybe it's my punishment that it never ends. And that was the oldest story in the Depression Chamber. I wasn't checking the chat, but I hope you all appreciated my epic Sopranos reference. I quit porn and started breaking shit. Sounds like he needs some porn. <laughs> That's right, James. He's just like me on God for real. Bedson's still alive. Should I reply to him? Should I? I'll let the chat write my email reply. <laughs> I'll shoot him a reply. I won't even link him to this. Let's see if he can find it on his own. Hmm. Okay, if you want to be part of the reply, start your message off with the number one, and then I'll just copy and paste everything after. Heartsea says, woe is me. Uh, there's a story called My Depression Plus Recipe. Kind of interested to find out that recipe. Please read this from four years ago. Oops. Okay. Okay, so here's the email. Dear Cool Story Bro, woe is me. <laughs> Kill yourself, lift weights, biggers are nad, jerk off. Uh, where'd it go? Uh, jerk off and quit being an edgy loser. Hello, I regret to inform you. And you are homosexual. Start rely with did. You ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? The Sopranos did it better than you, but A for effort. Pick up a football. Porn was clearly your grounding force. Hey, I thought your story was pathetic. Rope now. Woe is Mr. <laughs> wow, we've got uh, spelling mistakes on spelling mistakes here. Uh, anal cut. Woe is me. I have a GF. Kill your GF. My nuts are small. How's it going with Gwen? <laughs> your story aroused me to an extent I cannot put in words. Take cre creative and lift. Okay. I punch women in the back. One piece sucks. <laughs> he never did have the makings of a varsity athlete. Okay. Yeah, after the stream, I'll copy and paste all that and send it to him, and we'll see what he says. Oh, that's too funny. Okay, should we read, uh... Should we read this recipe one? Hmm, okay. Hey, Mumkey slash Simeon, my depression is kind of a chain reaction on life events, so I guess I'll begin with my life story. My issues are kind of weak compared to other people, but I have been bottling this up for my whole life. I was born in already divorced family and mother just remarried to a military man. My biological father was given days to see us, my sister and I, which I despised because not only was there nothing to do, there, but he would be weird with me, like, French kiss and cuddle on the couch slash bed? I didn't know this was an issue until I told my mom. When I was back home, I'd spend time with my grandmother, who was the most amazing person. I miss her every day. Sometimes, when my mom and my stepdad would go want to go somewhere, my biological dad would freak out and harass us. My uncle on his side of the family... Uh, was in the police force, so they would also harass us. They kidnapped me and my sister once when we were planning to leave to go watch my mother graduate college. The judge told them to release us, which sooner or later they did. My grandmother was so kind and a middle ground in this time until my biological father falsely reported her of being an illegal immigrant. We settled the report and had it dismissed. After constant harassment, we finally moved away from him. I went to a new school and was bullied for a good portion of my school life. My grandmother would make me this soup every day after school as a way to cheer me up. I would walk around with her around the local park, do chores, and even lay next to her in bed. She was my best friend despite the language barrier. I loved her very much. She eventually left to Mexico to visit family but ended up getting her visa expiring and unable to come back to the US. 
She was starting to get Alzheimer's and never had a birth certificate. She was born in the 30s, so she could never renew it. She was there for me from the very fucking beginning and I didn't know what to do without her. From the constantly torment of my biological father and school. She was the only person I could cry next to and love unconditionally and now she's unable to leave Mexico and my family is associated with law enforcement which is a huge no-no in Mexico. I grew up without her around and she passed away in my senior year. I still don't know what to do without her. I just want to hug her again. The only thing I can really enjoy is the soup she would make for me. If you want the recipe, I can give it to you. I wish she saw me graduate or get married. I have such a dependence I don't know how to let go. I live in filth even though she taught me to be clean. The thought of cleaning and folding clothes was our thing and not having her hurts. I lie awake at night crying because I miss her being next to me and snoring. I fucking hate sleeping alone. I used to have nightmares of going to her funeral, but I live an even worse one where I can't even see her tombstone and mourn properly. There is some good to the story though. I recently bought a hedgehog. Hey, Heartsy, is this you? Uh, he has been around since my sophomore year and he's been keeping me going so far. Much like your cat has put an impact on you, so has my little one. I love him every day and with him I am picking up the pieces. I don't think I am suicidal because he and my boyfriend need me. I need to be here for someone and my grandmother would never want me to do something like that. I'm sorry for the long message. Thank you for letting me speak and have this soup recipe. It will warm you up. Ingredients. White onion, minced garlic, fideo pasta, string, star, shell, any work, Two cans of tomato sauce, chicken flavored bouillon powder from Knorr, K N O R R, and oil of your choosing. Uh, how to make? <laughs> Get a medium sized pot, put a layer of oil, and have the heat on medium or so. Chop up the onions, should have two hands worth of chopped onions, and throw them in your pot of oil along with a half a spoon of minced garlic. Let those caramelized. Pour the fideo pasta in and mix until everyone knows each other. Then you open those two cans of tomato and pour them in careful. Once that kind of bubbles, put some water in. At this point, kind of dabble in how much water you want in. I like to put in two to two and a half big tall cups worth of hot water. Then you're going to put in the chicken flavored bouillon. Uh, I put two tablespoons, though, depending on how much water you can put in can to determine how much the powder and tomato needs to go in to make it perfect. You want to mix every 10 minutes while on high or medium high. Once it boils and the fideo pasta is kind of soft, then put it down to medium or medium low to simmer. The soup will turn somewhat reddish orange. That's good. If it tastes right to you, the pasta is soft and you are free to eat and enjoy. Please remember, if you make this, you must tell yourself this is made from love. When you make this, tell yourself you are loved, because I love you. And that's that story. It's watered down spaghetti. <laughs> wow. Just yeah, let, letting the dead grandma know that her recipe was dog shit. Sounds more like a potion than a soup. <laughs> you are loved, soup. Bumkey, remind us the real quick the names of every pet you have. I've got Blaze the Black Cat, Isabel the Asthmatic Old Cat, Scorch the Bearded Dragon, Tilly the uh, the Black and White Cow Print Cat, and her Miracle Son, who I'll, I'll tell a story about that on a podcast sometime, who uh, I named Shoji. So, five cat or five animals, four cats, one bearded dragon. I did not ever want to be a man with four cats, but uh, that last one just popped out. It was not my choice. I am a bit of a crazy cat man, but it is what it is. Heartsy says his heart was warmed when the hedgehog was mentioned. Maybe we should make hedgehog soup to really bring the story together. I, I did not get another cat. It was forced upon me. Yeah, I'll tell the story to Aggie on a future treehouse. I was very satisfied with three, but it is what it is, YouTube. Shoji is my new favorite one, though, so I'm glad he showed up. Monkey's cat is a hoe. So true. I I've showed the cat before. Uh, 
there's there's like two different treehouse podcasts with me and Iggy sitting right here and I'm holding the cat in the thumbnail. There's a dog in my video game. Good to know, Pokey. Uh, let's find another story to read. I'll let you guys vote this time. Let's see. Uh, how I survived the worst month of my life. Let's do a poll. Okay. Worst month. I know, you're correct, insert name. I do have four cats now. It is true. It is true. But Isabel, she's getting up there in age. So... It, it might be three in the next couple of years, and I'm not planning on getting a fourth again. Uh, my shite depression story trigger warning. Okay, this one has a trigger warning, so trigger warning. Is my house smelly? I hope not. I clean the shit every single morning, but I, I'm probably nose blind at this point. Eggy can tell me when he comes over. Uh, I'm not good at making friends. And the last one. This one's called Please Read This. <laughs> so we'll see. It's up to the chat. And now none of my cats are obese. They're all actually uh, fairly healthy as far as I can tell. But if anything, Shoji's mom is, is too small. Because... Yeah, he is, I, I think uh, baby kittens are supposed to be removed from their mother at a certain point. And he's now, what, three and a half months old and he's still sucking on her fucking milk bag. It, sucking that milky nipple every fucking day and she has shriveled up. Like he is sucking the life out of her. So hopefully he stops soon, but... Clickbait prevails. Why, who's winning? Uh, trigger warning is winning. Nobody wants to hear about the worst month of this guy's life. Okay. Uh, this one's pretty short. Let's do it. Uh, my shite depression story trigger warning. Hey, Mumkey, so I doubt anybody will, will care about this story I'm about to tell you because I can't think of anybody that would care about it, even I don't, and it's my own story, but it's time, it's my time to vent, and vent I fucking will, feel free to use my name. Uh, that's okay, buddy, I don't need to use your name. But this is weird, his, his email is at Google Mail, not even at Gmail, at Google Mail. The fuck? The fuck? No, Shoji is from Shoji Tabuchi. It's not a Filthy Frank reference. Uh, last time I remember truly being happy was 10 years old. After that is when it all went downhill. I recall the night I heard my dad beating up my mum. I was never the same after that. I was scared of him. I only went to stay with him to protect my mum. When I turned 16, I stopped seeing the twat... He was constantly trying to ruin my life, ruin my education, and tried multiple times to get me kicked out of college. I got bullied throughout school and didn't really connect with anybody in college, so I have always felt alone throughout my teens. And when I was 19, I met my first girlfriend. At first, it was lovely, but soon after, things changed. Around four months in, she started becoming physically and emotionally abusive with constant gaslighting. I fell deep. It was probably one of my darkest moments. Thank fuck she split up with me, otherwise I would have never gotten out of it. After college, I enrolled in university to study a foundation degree in university. I struggled through it and got into my third relationship. It was great compared to the first two, but recently we broke up just after I had a mental breakdown at work, which caused me to develop psychotic episodes. I got that job and moved down to be closer to her, and she dropped me like Snoop Dogg drops heat. Afterwards, I met somebody who I consider my bestest friend who helped me through my mental health problems. However, lately, when I needed them the most, they are not here. Have I been too much? Was it because my landlords illegally kicked me out and I was stressing too much? I don't know. All I know is I have little trust in people anymore, and I am just ready to fucking die already. I have started self-harming, and sometimes my hallucinations make me scratch at myself to the point of heavy bleeding. I have contemplated swallowing the 20 parakectamol. I don't know that medication. 
I have in my bedside drawer, but alas, I am too much of a coward to do what must be done. I can't tell what's real and what's not anymore. I am darker now than I have ever been. Sorry I got rambly at the end, but I'm just done, and I can't really bring myself to type anymore. Hmm. Should we respond to this one and see if uh, this at Google Mail address is still working? Randy the Wild Horse says, I have a trippy mind. <laughs> Boring, normie. <laughs> I want to hear about this dude's uh, horrible month, but it got the least amount of votes. Jesus Christ, why do you fucking submit this in like giant text? Whatever, it's just one big run on paragraph so we can do it real quick. How I survived the worst month of my life. All right, so my story begins back in 2012 when I had been dating the same girl for six or seven years, all through high school and beyond. I was living with my dad and had a great job at a five-star restaurant with a great car I was paying for with my dad's help. The problem with this scenario is I've always been obsessed with video games and I'm extremely competitive. Back then I was grinding out a certain competitive multiplayer game every spare second of every day, leaving my girlfriend just to browse shit on my laptop behind me, and I tried to get better and better at this game. The tipping point was when I was late to work for the third time in a month and got fired. I got pretty depressed with how I had been thrown away that job basically due to staying up too late playing the game and overslept. After a couple weeks, my dad saw I wasn't putting in enough effort to find another job and wasn't taking care of the car as well as I should have been, and took my car and kicked me out of his house, also calling my mom and telling her not to let me stay there either. Spoiler alert, she couldn't let me be homeless and took me in anyway. After losing my job, car, and home, a couple weeks later my girlfriend started acting cold towards me and seemed uninterested completely. Eventually breaking up with me, I also found out much later she just wanted me to chase her and didn't actually want to break up, but I let her have her space and she thought I wanted the breakup so we stayed separated. So after losing all of that, I was at the lowest point I had ever been and very heavily considered suicide, thinking I had flushed every opportunity down the toilet and there was no coming back. I then found out about three months later my ex was pregnant from a guy she was friends with in high school, so that didn't help either. This is where the story turns around. I stuck it out after realizing I was too much of a coward to end it all, and it ended up eventually getting a decent job, my mom helped me get a car, then I moved into a house with some of my best friends, and I've never been happier. Meanwhile, she has two kids, her boyfriend is in and out of jail, they are both druggies and live in a borderline crack den, and they can't even keep the lights on. Her brother is a good friend of mine and keeps me in the loop of how much of a shithole her life has become, lol. Nowadays, when I feel like shit kinda sucks, I just think how I made it through the worst month of my life so I can handle whatever comes at me with a basic shit happens mentality. Love your content, Mumkey. Keep up the great work. I see it. True Woo, True Woo says, is it a bad idea to say the N-word casually in front of normal people? I'm being serious. I'm going to college soon and I'm not sure what that's going to be like. I also have 2,600 hours in Boy 4 and no GF. I mean, do you really need us to answer that? <laughs> if you ha even have to ask, at least you know you're probably doing something wrong, right? Uh, yeah, I would recommend in the modern day, in a college setting, you will be ostracized and possibly lynched if you're dropping the N-word in front of fucking 19-year-olds. So... You know, I guess if you're suicidal, go for it. Soy 4 is a World War II transgirder game? <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? As long as you say it with the hard R, you are good. Lynched how the turntables, that's right. If you say the hard R, it shows confidence. 
Folks, I know that I always do the depression chamber, and then I say, oh, we'll be back next week. Don't worry, of course I'll do it again, and then we all have to wait a year. Uh, but I am sincerely hoping to start doing, you know, weekly streams on this channel, maybe even more often than weekly, depending on the different kind of streams I want to do. Uh, you can certainly bully me online and in all sorts of places if I don't actually come back and do the show again, but I should be back uh, this time next Sunday. Uh, Eggie might still be at my house at that point, so Eggie might be joining me for the Depression Chamber. But my current plan is to actually do this again one week from now. So uh, this is uh, my roundabout way of saying uh, we have arrived at the end of the show. Try to keep these around uh, 90 to 120 minutes. But uh, I'll still hang out with the chat for a little bit longer before we say goodbye. But uh, I think we tackled like at least... 12, 13 stories today. Lots of short ones. Convince Eggie to move to my trailer park and not to Thailand. I, I'm trying. And he's making good money at his job and there's so many trailers for sale and they're pretty fucking cheap. So he should be able to get in. Uh, Randy says up to me. What oh, is? Did we reach the dono goal for today, pimp? What is Wings's donation goal for every fucking stream? Like a hundred and forty dollars? Yeah, not quite. I'm gonna end up in Thai jail. Oh no, Aggie's gonna end up in Thai jail like Ice Poseidon. Yeah, I feel bad about that. I think we'll talk about that on the next, uh, the next what is it? The uh, Trash Rats podcast. My dear friend, Ice Poseidon, epic streamer. Who has done nothing wrong other than scam his own fans out of hundreds of thousands of dollars in a, a crypto scam. Uh, I guess he was dressed up in some women's lingerie and, and gave his girlfriend a lap dance on live stream. And then his, his own fan base gave the hotel like a bunch of one star reviews saying that there's a horrible lap dance going on. And now he's like under arrest and he's facing five years in prison in, in Thailand. And the reason why I say he's my friend is because one time when I was in Austin, Texas, visiting Kino Corner, uh, who was roommates with Glink at the time, and Glink was friends with Ice Poseidon, so we all went over to Ice's house, and Ice, he was a cool guy! He gave us free weed, he gave us free shrooms, you know, anybody who's given me free drugs is, is considered a friend to me, no matter how many people he scammed and ripped off. Uh, so, you know, I think Karma might have caught up with him. He's in a little bit of trouble. Hopefully he makes it home okay. But Ice is cool, who would have thought? Jared James, that's a good one. Heartsy, I've told this story a hundred times. How do you not know I met Ice Poseidon? I, I, I went around in his Tesla. He, you know, it's the first time I was ever in a Tesla driving around downtown Austin. Is David Clegg still alive? Highly unlikely. <laughs> Highly unlikely. Now, he's not my drug dealer. It was free. I d he just gave me free drugs. And <laughs> we, were, we were all hanging out. Kino Corner, he's a, he's a pussy bitch. He refused to do it. But me and uh, Glink and all them, you know, we were going to town. It was a good time. Eggy. Yikes, eh? <laughs> Don't say yikes, Randy. <laughs> Would you do a live stream with Only Use Me Blade? As long as my cats are not in the same room, so we can't throw them. The first one's always free. Well, I, I mean, he's fucking in prison across the world, so... I couldn't really buy drugs from him if I wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, is yikes. <laughs> Yeah, everybody, uh, if you do uh, join the Patreon Discord server, be sure to make fun of Heartsy Protsy by saying, Woe is me, spelled, uh, woe the wrong way. Woe is Ice Poseidon. Hit Sai up again, he crying. Sai can come back on the show anytime he wants. I'd be down to talk to Sai. Someone post the Discord link in chat. It's patreon.com slash mumkey to get into the Discord. Anyway, folks, 
Please do bully me if I'm not back here this time next week, possibly with Eggie, to read some more stories. If you would like to submit your own stories that I will most likely read next week, it's thedepressionchamber at gmail.com, not at googlemail.com, although that might actually work. I don't fucking know. Uh, but that's it for this chamber. So, you know, we got one in the chamber. My favorite Call of Duty minigame. See you next time, folks. Now, Heartsy, thanks for the last minute super chat. I didn't know Heartsy even had money. <laughs>